told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you Part 1 You will hear two people discussing an extramural course. Fill in the information you hear on the application form below. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now, here is the conversation. Hi, Jenny. What are you doing down here? Oh, hello, Steve. Well, I'm trying to fill in this form, but I'm having a bit of a struggle as I sprained my wrist playing tennis yesterday. Don't worry. I'll do it for you. Let's have your pen. Right, fire away. Mm, let's see. I want to do the drama and theatre studies. I'd like to get the certificate. The course number is uh, 60201. No, sorry, 202. It seems to be on Thursday at 7.30. Yes, well, we don't have to put all that down. Now, I suppose we can call you Miss. Don't be funny. And spell my name right. Hmm. Well, if you'll have a name like Jenny McPherson... Let's see. It's M-A-C. No. Big M, small c, no A. Right. M-C-P-H-E-R-S-O-N. Yes, OK. And don't forget it's a capital P, Macpherson. Now, what's your address? Well, I've just moved, so it's 6 Westway Avenue, Longford. Hang on, don't go so fast. 6 Westway Avenue, where? Longford. What's next? Your phone number, daytime and evening. Well, I've only got one, as we can't have calls at school in the daytime, so put down the evening one. 605-4829. 4829, OK. And you're a teacher. How old are you? 29? Mmm, wish I were. No. 32. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Do they want my date of birth? No, don't seem to. Just age. Uh, how about educational qualifications? Well, I've got a degree in English literature and a diploma in media studies. Media studies, right. Now, have you ever done any of these extramural courses before? No, don't think so. Although I did do something on psychodrama once. But no, it wasn't extramural, was it? That seems to be it, except for the fee. Yes, well, that's the same for all the central courses. I think £25. I suppose I have to include it with this form. <laughs> Looks like it. Uh, do you want me to write the cheque out for you? But uh, you'll have to sign it. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a teacher helping high school students visiting from an overseas school to fill in a school excursion permission note. 
first you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good morning, students. My name is Mrs Brown, and I'm in charge of the school excursion next week. Please take out your school excursion permission note so you can fill it in. For insurance purposes, this note must be signed by your guardian or the group leader. First of all, fill in the name of your class. Everyone here is in 3A, aren't they? So write 3A where it says class. We're going to the Blue Mountains, which is great. So this is the school excursion to the Blue Mountains. The day we leave is Monday. That's Monday, June 10. We are travelling by bus all the way, so we don't have to worry about changing trains or anything like that. The bus will leave from the front gate at 8 a.m. I know we usually use the side gate, but because of the roadworks, we will be using the front gate when we leave. However, when we return, the roadwork will be complete, so we'll use the side gate. We expect to be back at 6 p.m. It's going to be a lovely day. Your teachers will give you tasks to do when we arrive. We'll provide fruit and fruit juice on the bus but you must bring your own lunch. While we're on the excursion, we'll be moving around a lot in some fairly rough country. Be very careful to wear strong shoes. It's very important that you look after your feet very well. Now, does anyone have any questions they want to ask? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. No questions? OK. I'd just like to fill in a few more details. The bus should arrive in the Blue Mountains at 11am. We'll have time to do the first of our tasks before lunch. The bus is not a new one, but it does carry one piece of special equipment, a first aid kit. I certainly hope we won't have to use it, but it's nice to know it's there in case we have a medical emergency. The other class on this excursion is 3B, so I know it'll be a good day. The last time 3A and 3B went out together was a thoroughly successful excursion. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two university students talking about a music course. First, look at questions 21 to 23.
As you listen, answer the questions. Josie, come in. How are you? I'm good. Can I get you a coffee or anything? No, that's okay. I can't stay long. But you said you wanted to talk to me about that course I'm doing this semester, Music 103. That's right. Actually, I was a bit confused because I thought you were majoring in maths. That's right. I am. I'm doing four maths modules this year, but it's an optional course. You just choose it if you're interested, and you can do it whatever department you're in. Why are you thinking about doing it? Well, I'm not sure. What are the requirements? What? The course requirements. I mean, what do I need to know about music to be accepted on it? I do listen to a lot of music, everything from hip hop and rap to classical, and I can sing, sort of. Well, for a start, one special thing about this course is that it's distance learning. You don't actually have to be at the university to do it, and you don't have lectures. So you've got to be able to work on your own without someone telling you what to do all the time. Oh, oh, no, that should be okay. I reckon. I'm more worried about the actual musical stuff. Like, I don't know how to read music. That doesn't matter. They don't assume that. You'll learn as you go along. How's your maths? Not too bad. Right. Some of it's quite mathematical, so you really need to be strong there. But you play the violin, don't you? I don't play anything. You don't need to. What about computer skills? You're okay there. Yes, reasonably. Does that matter? Yes, I'd say they're essential. Like I said, it's all distance learning, so it's computer based. Before the conversation continues, look at questions twenty-four to thirty. Now listen to the second part of the discussion. What about lectures? You don't attend any. It's all online, so lots of the students aren't here in Canada at all. They're studying from home all over the world. We've got someone from my group in Jamaica, and a couple from Taiwan. Oh, and some from Hong Kong as well. So how does it work? Oh well, there's a multimedia course website on the internet where you can listen. You can listen and watch at the same time, and of course you can do it at your own pace. So if you don't understand something, you just go back. Or if you want some more examples of the music, there are links there to things that you can listen to. There's quite a lot of theory, but it's all done through musical examples, so it's practical at the same time. Like in the last module I did, we looked at a bit of the music from the movie Star Wars. The Darth Vader theme, you know. Dum 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 dum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Then we looked at a theme from Wagner's Tristan and Isolde. Do you know it? Written in the 1850s, and we could see there were all sorts of parallels between them. And that's a feature of the course. We often look at modern Hollywood themes to illustrate concepts in classical music. Hmm. It sounds really interesting. Do you have a course book? No, we don't use one. We're given a software program called Notability Lite, and what it does is it presents what we write, the music we write, really clearly, and it also allows us to play back any piece of music on our computer at home. But that's not all. We can write our own music, quite complex stuff for various instruments, and the program plays it back to us. Plays the actual music. Yes. So it means that your computer is actually your own musical instrument. And we can even submit our finished pieces to our tutor by email. So you do need your own computer, obviously. Yes, with at least sixty-four megabytes of RAM. That's okay. I've got one hundred and twenty-eight. Hmm. Oh, and a CD-ROM and a sound card, of course. No problem. So, how long is the course? It's six months. There are two a year, so you could actually enroll for the next one if you wanted. It starts in January. I started last September, and I finish in February. And how many credits is it? Three. In order to pass, you've got to do six assignments. I'm just doing my fourth one now, and take a final examination.、Oh, anyway, why don't you call round sometime, and I'll show you the sort of things we do. 
You can even listen to some of my music. That would be great. Well, thanks, Josie. Now, are you sure you don't have time for that coffee? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. We'll hear a speech by the Student Union Vice President for Finance. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now you will hear the speech. Hello. As VP of Finance, my job is to oversee the spending of our grant to ensure that all areas of student union activity run efficiently and smoothly, without any financial headaches. I have a thoroughly efficient finance team Ursula, Ella and Henrik. We are all here to help you as best as we can. Remember that even though I administer the union's finances, it is ultimately you who has the final say in expenditure policy, either directly, through the democratic process of the general meetings, or by voicing your opinions through the Executive Finance Committee. I would like to take this opportunity to thank last year's VP Finance, Martin Curry, for his excellent work in improving the financial running of the union to what it is today. Finally, remember to enjoy yourself and to use the union facilities and services to the full. And if you're still not satisfied, come and let us know why. Extra note, in order to maximise my time as VP Finance and to give a more efficient service to students, the Finance Office will only be open to students from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. and 2 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. The Cashier's Office will be open from 12 o'clock noon to 2 o'clock p.m. daily. That is the end of Part 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.